Hey guys, I'm back here with day five of the holiday series. Today's card is for the online card class for the holiday workshop. And today's lesson was all about creating a scene, or excuse me, an interactive card. So for my card, I wanted to create a shaker card, which was an example. So what I'm using is the Lawn Fawn Winter in the Park. It's like one of those mini stamp sets that I absolutely a door so I'm using that to set the scene um, for my shaker card so what I've done is I've stamped all the pieces out onto just some scratch white cardstock and I'm going to fussy cut it out the snow that you see in there I'm actually going up against the line but for all the other um, elements that I'm using on my card I'm leaving a very slight white border um, just because I liked the look of it a little bit more. And no, I will not be boring you with uh, me fussy cutting every piece. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to cut them all out. I'm just going to fussy cut them all out. And then um, the only one that I'm lining with black and I'm using the distress marker is the snowbank because I'm cutting right up against that black line. Everything else, I'm leaving a little bit of a white border, so I'm not doing this. But I did want to show you guys so that you were aware of it. So I'm going to go on and fussy cut all the other pieces. And it takes me what feels like 100 years. But once I get that done, I'm actually going to move on to the background of my shaker card. I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper because I love this stuff to use the Distress inks on. It blends like butter. And I'm going to be using um, a glittery mist to react with this. So I did want to use the watercolor paper since it does really well with water. So I'm starting out with the Broken China and I'm covering just about all of the panel with that and then I'm going over starting from the top the Peacock Feathers because I do want to get somewhat of a gradient look and then over top of that I'm using Chipped Sapphire and using the blending tool with this. Um, sometimes I get a little bit of splotchiness from the sponge but not very often at all. Um, so you'll see sometimes I work it a little bit extra and my camera had a really tough time focusing because I was just blending like a mad woman and I also had this on super super sped up so that you guys didn't watch it um, because it took me a little while but I love how it turned out. So once I've got it all blended I'm going to go ahead and I'm using this Sheer Shimmer Spritz in Frost. It comes with two colors. I believe Frost is one color and Sheer is the other one. Or Sparkle, I'm not sure. But I'm using the Frost one. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I'm just spraying a little bit onto my craft mat. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a paintbrush that I have pretty much dedicated for this technique. And I just swirl it in there and then I tap my paintbrush to flick on some of this um, shimmer spritz. And then in spots that I feel needed a little extra, I just tap my paintbrush in the mixture and then dab it exactly where I want it on the paper. Um, and so I really like this effect. It kind of gives this snowy feel to it. This was something, again, I learned from Jennifer McGuire um, in one of her videos last year. And I tend to do it a lot on my holiday cards because I just love the feel of it. Um, but because I am very impatient, I am using my heat tool to kind of dry it up. And you'll see that I take a baby wipe and I kind of dab it in certain areas that are really, really wet because I'm just trying to speed up the process and finish this card. So, um, I am heat setting this, and then you'll see here that shimmery shine from that um, spritz spray. And you can definitely do this if you have um, perfect pearls and just some water and mix it together. I've done that in a video before. But I like this spray because the work is already done for you. and. Um, yeah, so I just use this every once in a while. So I'm taking my go-to Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die, and I'm creating a frame for my shaker card. So I'm laying a larger, the largest one, and then I'm going, not the next size down, but one below that to create the frame. And I'm running that through my cuddle bug. You'll see that I'm using some cardstock. This is kind of like my shim, because sometimes I don't get a super clear... Um, cut or that stitch doesn't come out perfectly so I like to use a little bit of cardstock as a shim so that I get the um, perfect uh, cut through with that. So you'll see here that I have my window panel I'm just kind of laying everything out 
and then I realized I need some snow banks, so I'm going to my current go-to die, which is the Paper Smooches Border Number no. 1 die, and I'm just cutting this out of some scrap white cardstock, and I'm using the piece that I actually purposely cut at the bottom, and I'm using um, the snow bank that you see and just flipping it around and cutting it um, so that I don't have to die cut another piece. Um, so then I'm just kind of laying it out exactly where I want. I want to make sure that it's up high enough um, behind the frame so that it's not getting lost behind that park bench. So you'll see here that I'm fiddling with it a little bit, but I just want to make sure that I have it aligned perfectly so that it is higher than the bench so that it looks like some snow banks or snow drift. So um, then once I have the snow banks and the park bench and the frame, I realize that it's just too much stark white and I love clean simple and white but it was just too much so I'm taking this very light gray from Simon Says Stamp and Fog and I'm using the Simon Says Stamp um, Holiday Borders that came out last year and I'm just doing this around the frame and really it's not too much it's just perfect and it's not that stark white and it ties in with that holiday feel because it's that reminds me of that knit uh, sweater so I've gone ahead and just made little tick marks on my frame so I know exactly where to adhere the snow banks. Now, something you want to think about is I attach the snow banks to my frame before attaching the acetate because I don't want the snow banks to interfere with the sequence that I'm putting in my shaker cart. So you just want to be um, aware of that kind of stuff just to make sure that you don't have anything conflicting with your sequence shaking like they're supposed to. So I've gone ahead and attached the snow banks to my frame. And then you'll see here in a minute that I'm going to attach the acetate behind the snow banks. And again, I'm just lining my bench. I wanted to see exactly where it was. And I wanted to tuck the um, front legs of the bench behind the frame and I'm just kind of laying out exactly where I want everything. So I'm just applying a little bit of uh, tape runner to the back of the park bench and I'm using Tombow Mono um, regular Tombow Mono multi glue to attach um, the lanterns <laughs> I don't know why I'm at a loss for words today so I'm using the lanterns and then I'm cutting down the acetate um, to exactly the size of the frame, which would be four and a quarter by five and a half. It's the full front of an A2 size card. Um, and so once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and attach that with, again, some tape runner. You can use something a little bit stronger. But I don't seem to have a problem with this. And because we're going to be attaching um, foam adhesive behind it to give space for our shakers, um, it, it works out just fine. So once I have the acetate down, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of more of the Tumble Mono Multi to attach the lanterns. And be careful when you do this because I always, always, always have glue oozing. And the last thing you want on the front of a shaker card where you have, you know, clear backing and you have sequins where you can see it is this glue that's oozed out. So just be cautious of that because I definitely did that on one side. So then comes the fun part of foam adhesive. Um, I'm using the 3M Scotch foam adhesive and I'm double layering it up just to be sure that I have enough space for my sequence to really shake. And you want to make sure you have no gaps. So I do that on the whole back panel, um, the whole backing of the front. And then I'm attaching my um, watercolor sheet with some of the Tombow Extreme Adhesive because it does warp a little bit after you heat set it and it gets wet. So I'm just using that to be sure that it sticks perfectly fine. And there you'll see all the foam tape that I used. I went crazy, but it is a shaker card, so I like to be super sure that it's working out. And now I'm using these um, snowflakes that I got at Michael's, I believe. And I just lay them down first to make sure that they look okay and then I'm going ahead and adding a whole bunch of different colored sequins. Finally got it organized in my caddies which looks way different from the last video I had with sequins in it so um, yeah this is way easier to work with. So once I have all the sequins and I feel like I don't have enough I need to add like five more of each color I go ahead and peel off all the backing of the foam tape and then I take my whole um, card base of my card that I have the background and I turn that over and attach it right to that front panel and that way I line it up exactly where it needs to go um, and it makes it very easy 
and then flip it over and look, shaker, woo! I love it, it looks really great. Um, now that I've finished with it, I'm second guessing the snowflakes in there, but I do like how it turned out. Um, to add a little bit more color to the front, I'm just using a yellow Copic marker. I believe it was Y15. And I add that to the inside of the lights. And then I did stamp out the bows that come in the stamp set on wet paper, white paper, and fussy cut it because I felt like, again, it just needed that little extra color. It was just too white. And then I'm adding the snow on the top of the park bench, and I'm using my Wink of Stella to add that shimmery snow look. And then I was thought I was done, and then I was like, oh my god, I need a sentiment on the front. So I'm using the same stamp set and using the season greeting, stamping that with VersaFine ink, and that finishes the card. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again for another video in the holiday series. And be sure to check out the description box below for a list of supplies used on this card. I'll see you guys soon.